Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus again today. This is our last episode, episode five of five in our series on telescopes. Make sure you go back and watch all the other four episodes. You can learn about how telescopes worked, who invented them, what we use them for, and even why we have all of these different types of telescopes, X-ray, infrared, gamma ray. What are they for? What do we learn? So now that we know all about telescopes and we know all of those things, how they work and what they can pick up, I mean, it's easy to say that everything in the universe was probably discovered by some telescope, you know, at least as far as we're concerned. We spotted it with a telescope, right? But that's actually not true. Telescopes are super useful tools. But what ends up happening is just because we discover something doesn't mean that we spotted it and that's how we discovered it. For example, Neptune was technically discovered by a mathematical calculation. They did the math and they said, oh, there's probably a planet right here somewhere. Then they went to the telescope community, the astronomy community, and they said, hey guys, can you start looking for this planet? And eventually they found it. And that also is happening this year, 2016, with allegedly Planet Nine. The alleged Planet Nine was mathematically postulated, the newest giant planet way out past uh, Uranus and Neptune. And that's mathematically thought of, but hasn't been spotted with a telescope yet. So now we're in that, that cycle again. But telescopes have been responsible for a lot of great findings over the years, even though it's not all of them. It helped prove the theory that Earth revolves around the sun. Kind of important. Good job, telescopes. It also helped prove that galaxies other than our own exist. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, not the only one. And in fact, there are many, many, many hundreds of galaxies, thousands of galaxies. There are galaxies in every state from born to dying, from being colliding with each other to slicing each other in half. We've seen all of them doing all of those different things. That's how many galaxies there are. I have all the permutations. An amateur astronomer with a homemade telescope discovered Uranus. And nowadays when you hear about a telescope discovering something new, it's usually credited back to things like the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble is inarguably the most famous telescope that humans have ever built. It's made so many amazing discoveries. It's had so much drama. I mean, it was broken. It was out of, you know, out of focus when we put it up there. We had to go back and fix it a number of times and make sure you check out earlier episodes in the series if you need to know more about what the Hubble Space Telescope has done. It's pretty great. But there's still stuff out there to discover all the time. Science is never done. If you're like me, you probably wondered though, how they decide what to look at. The sky's kind of big, right? If you have a telescope and you're like, okay, discover something. How do you know what to look at? Time on a telescope is premium. You only have at night and you have to get it ready before the night starts so you're not wasting your time. So a good telescope is constantly being bombarded with proposals for their time by scientists and astronomers from all over the world. Some people want a dark sky, for example. That's a new moon. When the moon is either new or right around there, that's great for visible light astronomy, right? You don't want the moon to clog up what you're trying to see. But if you're using infrared, you don't necessarily care if there's a moon or not, because you're not looking at that part of the spectrum. X-ray is kind of the same. Uh, and of course, not all the telescopes in the world can accommodate all the proposals. So what happens is it's not so much that here's a telescope, what do you want to find out? It's I have a telescope and everyone comes to me to try and figure out if I can help them figure out what they want to find. And that's the same with every telescope around. So telescopes like the Hubble get so many proposals and they only have so much time in the day to act on them. They actually turn down nine out of every 10 proposals for Hubble Space Telescope time. And they put them all in order so they're not like moving the telescope all over the place. They, you know, prioritize them. They have this whole scheduling system. It's really complicated. But telescope time, super interesting. Like the, you know, inside baseball of science. Plus, when something is cool and discovered on a space telescope, that just makes people want to use ground-based telescopes more, right? 
You get that one in 10, that proposal goes up to the Hubble, they run your program, they defeed you your data, and you're just like, oh my God, this is so great. You publish a paper, and then all of these ground-based telescopes are like, oh, well now I gotta look at that part of the sky and see and confirm what that guy published. More discoveries just breed more discoveries when it comes to telescopes. As we speak, there's actually a team getting a new amazing space telescope ready, the James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST. The JWST is gonna be the successor to the Hubble, which will eventually die. They'll probably deorbit it. It'll crash in the ocean somewhere. Really, really sad, actually, if you think about it. It's been around forever, but I mean, it seems like to me, young kid, but whatever. Anyway, James Webb is gonna be an optical and infrared telescope. And the idea is it's gonna be able to see the oldest things in space, the very first galaxies to form after the Big Bang. It's equipped with a mirror that's six and a half meters across. Hubble's is only 2.4, which means it's gonna have a larger field of view. It's gonna see further, it's gonna see fainter objects, and it can see more light. The instruments on the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to pick up better infrared images, more spectra. Besides the mirrors, the big difference between the Hubble and the James Webb is that that infrared wavelength is a whole new way of looking at the universe, right? The Hubble can really just see what we see, just that little sliver, optical EM radiation. Infrared, just outside of that, tells us so much more, temperatures and all sorts of stuff. Tune into the earlier episodes if you haven't done that already. But doing all of that combined with a bigger mirror means more power, more science, more discovery. Besides that, we can use the James Webb to measure redshift because the universe is expanding. We can get a better picture of how that is expanding and how light emitted from different things is being redshifted differently. The James Webb Space Telescope is just gonna be incredible. I mean, the number of mirrors, and I know I've said this already, but it can see the earliest galaxies. It can see the beginnings of our universe. That's insane. It'll be able to see things that are 10 billion times fainter than the faintest visible stars that you can see with your eyes looking up at the night sky. That's 10 to 100 times more faint than even what the Hubble Space Telescope can see. So imagine every Hubble Space Telescope image you've ever seen that's like, wow, multiply it by 10 to 100 times. Yeah, it's gonna be great. So. Like I already said, the James Webb Space Telescope, we're gonna try and see those first galaxies. One NASA site said the Hubble, it can see toddler galaxies, that's fine. The Webb is gonna be able to see baby galaxies. We're gonna see the formation of stars, we're gonna see the first stages of planetary systems, and of course, potential for life in those systems. Some scientists are going so far as to say that because of something as powerful as the James Webb, we will be able to detect life in the universe. Something like the James Webb could do that. It's crazy, sounds insane, but that's how powerful this new telescope is gonna be. And it almost didn't happen. Look into it. I'm not gonna get into the whole budgetary policy, organizational problems that the Webb has had throughout the history. It's crazy. Anyway, it's happening and it's exciting. Basically, the James Webb is gonna look billions of years into the past, help us understand how this, I'm frantically waving for those listening at home, was all created. There's a great quote that we found. If Hubble's history is any example, Webb's most important discoveries will provide answers to questions we do not yet know how to ask. God, I love space telescopes. Just telescopes in general. Unfortunately, the JWST doesn't launch until October of 2018, and then it'll take another six months to get it into orbit properly and get it started up and ready to go. I could talk about how cool the James Webb is for like another five episodes, but I'm not gonna do that. There are other amazing telescopes here on the ground that are being built. The Giant Magellan Telescope at Las Campanas Observatory in Chile is on top of a mountain that has some of the clearest and highest, driest places in the world, so you can have clear nights all the time, you don't have as many clouds. And they're hoping that that one's gonna be completed by 2024. It's gonna have seven to 10 times the light gathering power of the largest telescopes in existence today, 10 times the resolution of Hubble, four times the resolution of James Webb Telescope. We can do that because it's easier to build them when it's on the ground. We don't have to launch them into space. Space has its own advantages. We've talked about that. This one will study the formation of stars and planets as well, but also look for dark matter and dark energy. 
take pictures of exoplanets, all sorts of really cool stuff. The Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, also being built in Chile, will hopefully be ready in 2019. And when that goes online, it'll be the world's most powerful camera on a telescope, and it will be able to survey near-Earth asteroids, exoplanets, stars, galaxies far, far away, and literally long, long ago. That's a pun, but it's also true. The plan is for that one to take a picture of the night sky every 30 seconds, and it's gonna move 10 degrees, 10 square degrees at a time. So at 100 pictures an hour, 800 a night, covering 8,000 square degrees, and every third night it'll return to the first spot and it'll start again, and over 10 years, we will have not just pictures of space, but the movement of space objects in that field over a decade, we're gonna have a time-lapse picture of the universe over 10 years. That's crazy, because the LSST comes online next year. I mean, this is insane, right? Telescopes, the more you dig into them, the more complicated they can get and the more cool they are. The best part is all of these telescopes essentially use the same thing. As I said way back in the first part of this series on telescopes, it's a, it's a light bucket. It collects light and focuses it so we can look at it, either with our eyeball or with a computer. You could do this at home the same way that a scientist with a 30 meter mirror on top of a mountain can do it. There is plenty of universe to look at, you can look at planets and moons, you can look at galaxies, and I've talked to so many astronomers and I love asking them the first time they looked into a telescope, what did they look at? It's always like the moon or Jupiter or something, but everyone gets a big smile on their face because there's nothing like looking at it with your own eyes and realizing that that is the thing that you kept seeing pictures of in your textbooks, computer animations of on NASA websites. That's it, you're looking at it. Only telescopes can do that. Super cool. I mean, you could go Google it if you want to, but that's just not the same. Guys, thanks for tuning in to this series on telescopes. We hope you enjoyed it. It kind of blew our minds when we were doing the research for this. I just got back from a huge trip over to the Discovery Channel Telescope in Arizona. It was so cool. I actually just got back today. And this is all because of the global premiere of Telescope on Discovery Channel. Telescope is gonna air on February 20th at 9 p.m. It's gonna be really awesome. It's all about the James Webb Space Telescope, how they built it, all of the drama around its construction and soon to be launch. It's gonna be so cool. Make sure you put that on your calendar. Tune in, record it, whatever you wanna do, check it out. Let me know down in the comments if you ever looked through a telescope and what was your first telescope experience? What was your holy crap telescope moment? Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus, everyone. We will see you next time with more science. Make sure you come follow us on Twitter. You can find the show at Test Tube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. We'll see you later.